everyone, it's Leanne here. Welcome to another video at my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how I did the copy coloring for the adorable Fairy Friends stamp set from Lawn Fawn. So to begin, I've stamped out each one of the stamps from the stamp set, and I've done this on a white cardstock. And I'm going to start with the first little fairy, and I'm just coloring in the skin tones. Now the set I'm using is from the Copic Marker set of the Skin Tone Collection and I will link that in the description below so you can check that out if you want to take a look. Now a little embellishment I add to the fairies is a little hairband here. There's a nice natural hairline, um, a spot above the hairline to add this hairband and I like to coordinate it with the dress colors that I make. So I use a Micron pen to draw that in and that's a Copic friendly color or a Copic friendly marker and so I add that in there. And then for this fairy, I wanted to make her a pretty blonde fairy. So I'm adding three colors to her hair. I'm doing a light tone first just to mark it where I want the highlights of the hair to be. And then I go in with a medium tone to strengthen the hairlines. And then I go in with my darkest color just to create the shadows on the tops and the bottoms of the hair. So I have that all touched up and I'm just doing above the hairband there. And then for the wings on this fair, I'm going to do a light blue and a medium blue. And I've mentioned this in other videos, but when you're drawing thin light lines, sometimes it's really tricky. And some people find it easier to draw them away from you, and others find it easier to draw them towards you. So whatever works easiest for you, just stick with that. There's no right or wrong method, and it really helps to turn your page. And don't be afraid to turn your page and think that you're not doing it right, because if you get the best angle, then it's definitely worth doing. So I have the flowers colored in. This one I'm doing in a medium purple. I will put all of the copy colors that I use for each item below in the description as well, so you can have a reference for that. Um, so this flower, now my other flower I did in a darker green. I felt that the sunflower was more of a washed out sort of um, green on the base, but this one I wanted to use something brighter for that flower. And I'll use the same green set for this flower trio as well. Now for these um, bells, I decided to do a white flower, and so using the colorless blender and the lightest color of um, like a blue violet, that's how I, I shade those with the Copic colors, so I'm not leaving them white, I'm actually creating a shadow with a very soft light blue, and you can see how they still look white, but they have a little dimension to them. Now the, for this fairy, I went one set of skin tones darker in the set, so I'm using E11, E13, and E15. And so that gives her more of a darker tan colored skin, I guess. And I'm just getting that all put together with the highlights. And I've added the hairband here as well. I do that with all my fairies. And it's a nice way to tie in the dress color with the hairband as well. And it just kind of adds a little bit more harmony to the overall photo. I like this, this look. And this dress color combination is my favorite. I've been coloring this a lot lately. I've been putting it on a lot of fairies and a lot of cards I've done. Uh, if you watch my Circle Shaker card video, you probably saw this combination as well. I think it's just so pretty, and yellow is my favorite color, so I've really been loving this color set right now. And so I'm doing the Brunette Fairy here, and you can see the colors that I've used. And again, I'm using those three shades. I start with my lightest just to graft in how I want the hairline to fall and where I want the highlight on the hair to be and then using the medium tone to strengthen that and then the darkest tone to add those shadows. And now for this fairy's wings I decided to do a pink tone and with that blush color, that Copic blush, that adds a little bit more of a yellow tone to that pink so it kind of um, dulls it down a bit so it's not so bright. And I'm using Y13 and Y35 on the little wand there, a nice bright sunny yellow. And then I came in with Lionette Gold on the lantern as well to create those shadows. Now with this fairy I colored the hair first and I did a wash of that brown color because I'm going to do a red-headed fairy. But because the reds that I have are so intense the highlight on the hair looks too stark so I wanted to do a base color just to have a light tone as the base so that when the highlights shine through you're not seeing white paper but you're seeing more like a red-haired tone. So here I'm going in now that that's dry. That's the other important thing. I wanted to let that wash dry because if I didn't, then as I add these other lines in, they would bleed together because that's how the markers work. Um, and they blend really well, but I didn't want the hair, the hair lines to blend in this one because I wanted those nice wispy looks. 
So once I had that base dry, I was able to easily add those other lines over top. And then I did yellow wings for this fairy. And now I'm ready to color the little fairy house. And I think this one's so cute. So I'm using sort of a brown tone to keep the base more muted, sort of like a mushroom would be or something of a ground um, element, I guess. And then the top of the house, it looks like an upside down flower. So I really like to make that the bright focal point of this image. So I'm creating the door too and adding the shadow. And then I go back and add some wood texture lines as well. And I find this is really fun and a nice little touch to this. And now the fun part, you get to color the fun flower on the top and make it nice and bright. I love this. So I'm doing a purple tone and I'm getting everything colored in and I add a little bit of texture to this as well and you'll see that next. So I take this peony color, this RV69, and add those um, sort of vein lines in the flower and that creates my shadow. And then for the rocks, instead of doing typical gray, I decided to do some blue tones to make those a little bit more brighter. And to top it all off, I take my Wink of Stella pen in clear. And this is a glitter pen, and I brush that all on the fairy's wings. And it adds a really nice sparkle, just a little extra touch, a finishing touch to the fairies. And fairies are magical, so they should have sparkles on them. It's pretty cute. And this brush pen is actually a really nice brush pen to use. It comes out really smooth and glides on the paper. And it doesn't take a lot to make it glittery. You don't have to go over it too many times. You just do one wash and that's it. And I found this at Michael's. So it's relatively easy to pick up. And I'll hold the paper up and tilt it to the light. Hopefully you can see, you can see the glitter. It's a lot more prominent in real life than I'm able to capture on the camera but it does look really pretty. You can sort of see it on the wings. On the blue, it stands out the best there. And so these are all colored. These are the bulk of the stamps from that stamp set. There are a few negative shapes as well, and they are best stamped in colored ink. Like there's some grass tundrals that can be stamped in green, for instance. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so you're notified the next time I post a video. Thanks so much for watching.